My name is Nnamdekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. That name that strikes fear into the heart of the Fulani Janjaweed. When they hear IPOB, they start having nightmares. I lead that very movement. Movement of the children of light. And have we not brought enlightenment to all the people? This very movement that heaven ordained must free the whole of Nigeria. Everybody must be free. And that light, the same way that the sun rises from the east, that light is coming from the east. As always. I am the director of Radio Biafra and Biafra Television. God gave me another assignment this year. It's serious. Not only to serve the wonderful people of Biafra, but also to serve the brave youth of Nigeria. And that is what I'm doing this evening. And will continue to do until everybody is free. Until every corrupt politician is either in the grave because they'll be hanged or they are in prison. The difference between some of you and us is that we say something and we do it. You, you keep muttering and bumbling. Those things are bad, though. Oh, things are bad, though. Here, we make our dreams become the reality. Not because we have any strength. Not because we are better than any other person. But because Elohim, Kiko Kikabi Amapuri, is on the throne. I am always speaking the truth. You may not like it, but it is the truth. Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, lovers of freedom, our Ududua brethren, and very soon, the freedom, the freedom fighters that will emerge from the Middle Belt. I welcome each and every one of you to this very special broadcast. I am well aware that given what has transpired in the past few days, that the whole world is listening to us. Those that run Twitter are listening to us. Even those that run Facebook as well, they are listening to us this very evening because we are broadcasting live and direct to the entirety of humanity on a multitude of platforms. We are live on Twitter, believe it or not. We are broadcasting live on Twitter. We are live on Instagram. We are also live on YouTube. We are live on FM in Biafra land. We are live on IPOB community radio. We are live on Radio Biafra app. We are on satellite. We are on Biafra television and a whole host of others. I am also on my private Facebook page. I do not want to advertise it too much because if I do, believe you me, they will do all their best to try to shut it down because Facebook and Nigeria is in the pocket of the tyrants and the pocket of the bullies and the pocket of the Fulani Janjaweed. And that is the reason why we must do everything humanly possible within our powers to ensure that the whole world listens to what we are saying because our message is unmistakable. It is very, very clear. It is about the restoration of the kingdom of heaven upon the face of this very earth for which we owe no soul an apology. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. Wherever you are in the world, as long as you have an internet enabled device, you ought and should be able to listen to us. And please, I welcome you this very evening from where I am. Endeavor to welcome other people as well, especially your friends, your family, those that you wish were born elsewhere, but not in the damnable contraption called the Zoological Republic of Nigeria. The time now is exactly eight minutes past 7 p.m. in the sacred land of Biafra. And by the same number of minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you are, I welcome all of you this very evening, morning, noon or night, depending on where you're listening to us from. My name is Mazin Namdekano. I lead the largest mass movement on the face of this very earth, the nightmare of the Janjaweed. 
Here we speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Incontrovertible, of course. Sometimes controversial, admittedly so, but incontrovertible truth. That is what we preach on this very noble platform. I, I'm sure right now in Abuja, everywhere is at a standstill. If you go to Asorok now, most of them are on Bikudin. Some of them are on ibuprofen. Some of them are on painkillers. Some are even taking hard drugs, I'm telling you the truth. Because they cannot fathom, they cannot understand, they cannot comprehend our tenacity, our determination, and our doggedness. They understand that very clearly. I am the director of radio Biafra and Biafra Television, and by the very special grace of the Most High Elohim in heaven, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. We have gone past the stage of lamentation. We no longer lament. They kill us. They invade our homes. They do everything humanly possible to dehumanize us. But we are carrying on regardless because we are, quite frankly, unstoppable. They are incapable of stopping us. That is why this evening, regardless of where you are, you must participate. Get your pen and your paper ready. If you're a ginger weed, you get your chalk and your slate. Because this evening we are going to lecture, we're going to teach, we're going to enlighten, we are going to bring knowledge to you. And if you are discerning, if you are the discerning type, believe you me, you ought and should be able to learn a lot this very evening. Morning, you know, depending on where you are. This very broadcast is going out to the whole world. Everybody's listening all over the world. Heads of governments are listening. Social media giants are listening. Everybody wants to hear what we have to say. It is a gospel, a message given to us from heaven itself. And we must preach it to the living. First of all, before we proceed, you must understand that we are in a season of prayer with intermittent fasting now and again. We are reading the book of Psalm from number 1 to 150. Today is our seventh day, and I am going to pray my prayer this evening as it is customary for us to do on this noble platform. And I'm going to pray the prayer of David from the book of Psalm. Chapter 7. And I will pray in English because a lot of people are listening all over the world. I mean, a lot. Millions are listening all over the world. And I want them to follow our proceedings this very evening. Very, very critical. Very, very important that we do so. Oh Lord, my God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, we take refuge in you. Save and deliver us from all that pursue us. Because if you look away from us, they will tear us apart like a lion and rip us to pieces with no one to rescue us. Because the world is against Biafra for no reason. We are hated, we are despised for no discernible reason. Only thee, O Lord God Almighty in heaven, is our savior, not man. You must come to our rescue because you are our Lord and you are our God. If we have done this, if I have done anything, if there is guilt on my hands, if I have repaid anybody, be it friend or an adversary, with evil or without cause have done wrong to any man or woman, then let the fallen ginger wheat pursue and overtake me. Let them trample down my life to the ground and make me sleep in the dust. Arise, O Elohim, Adonai El Shaddai in your anger rise up against the rage of the full and danger with Caliphate and the Zoological Republic. You will rise and you will fight for your children. You will awake, O Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the owner of the universe, 
for you must decree justice. Let your children and all men and of goodwill gather around you while you sit on top of your throne in the highest of the heavens, the habitation that only they can ever, ever occupy. Only you, O oh Heavenly Father, will judge the people. You will vindicate me, O oh Lord, you will vindicate IPOB, you will vindicate your children of Biafra according to our righteousness, according to our integrity. O oh, Most High, bring an end to the violence of the wicked, bring an end to Fulani Janja with violence in our land, bring an end to the abductions, bring an end to their kidnappings, bring an end to their extrajudicial slaughter of the innocent, bring an end to their forced conversion of Christians into Islam, bring to an end their mediocrity, bring to an end their senseless feudal rule, bring to an end their evil and their deception. Come and secure the righteous. Because only you, O oh God Almighty in heaven, can see in the dark. Only you know the hearts of men. You are our shield. We have nobody. Between 67 and 1970, the whole world ganged up and fought against your children. We did not steal anything from anybody. We did not go after anybody's possession nor inheritance. We were on our own in the land that you gave to our ancestors. They conspired, they connived, they colluded to kill us, over five million people. We are dead at the end of it. You are our shield. We do not trust in any man or in any state. We trust only in the because you are God and you always save the upright at heart. Anybody whose heart is clean, O oh, Heavenly Father, to those you do not abandon to their enemies. That is why you cannot abandon IPOB. That is why Biafra can never be abandoned. Because your words are yea and amen. You are God, you are not human. Facebook may have been bought over by Nigeria, and we pray that Twitter will not succumb to their threats and their violence. You are God and you are not pride and a just judge. But you are also a God that displays his wrath every blessed day. If Fulani Janja we do not relent in what they are doing, if the Fulani Caliphate continues to pursue this scorched earth policy of abductions and murder and mayhem, then you, O oh Lord God in heaven, you will sharpen your sword, you will bend and string your bow, you will prepare your deadly weapons, you will make ready your flaming arrows, Whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to, to disillusionment. That is what is happening in the zoo called Nigeria. Nigeria is pregnant with evil because it conceived trouble and it has now given birth to disillusionment. All the holes that the Fulani Janjaweed are digging for us into that pit, they are falling into one after the other. The trouble that they have caused will always rebound on them. Their violence will come down on their own heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, for we shall give thee thanks always, all the days of our lives, 
because only thee is righteous. We shall sing songs of praise unto your holy name, O Most High. For as long as there is a child on this earth of Biafran descent and heritage, O Heavenly Father, we shall worship your name and your name alone. Now and forevermore we pray. He said, he said, he said, that was our prayer this evening. We are now going to proceed without further hesitation to bring to you the gospel which I have been mandated by heaven to preach to the children of men. First of all, this evening, morning, noon, or night, depending on where you are, I want to congratulate Twitter for standing up to the Fulani bullies. They are bullies that is, that is who they are. They came into Gobe, which is today's Sokoto. They bullied the Hausa people. In fact, they convinced Hausa people to fight themselves. At the end of the day, they became the beneficiaries. The Hausa kingdom of Gobe became Fulani Emirate, called Sokoto. Facebook, I must say, capitulated. Facebook came to Nigeria made their headquarters in Africa, if I'm not mistaken, or is it West Africa, in Nigeria, and proceeded to receive huge sums of money. The entire staff of Facebook in Nigeria are under the payroll of the Ministry of Information and Culture. They are all compromised. Facebook capitulated because of money and threat from the dead dictator, that the Fulani cabal are now ruling in his name. Therefore, I say to Almighty God, thank you very much that Twitter chose Ghana instead of Nigeria, because sometimes I imagine what would have become of Twitter had they made their headquarters in Nigeria. By now, I am sure Lai Mohammed, the entire Fulani Caliphate, a wash with vast sums of money would have bribed the entire staff of Twitter as they did to Facebook. And their mission rather than uh, being one where thoughts and ideas are shared over the social media, they would have gone straight on into censorship and restriction, the same thing that Facebook is now doing today in Nigeria. Because Facebook's mission today is to stop free speech and every article that is critical of the government of Nigeria. That is why, or that was why, I tried to argue yesterday with some of my people that the Attorney General of the Federation of Nigeria, Malami, ordering the prosecution of offenders is not only laughable, but it is the height of unforgivable idiocy. Before we came on air, my good friend Fanny Kayode and a few other people like uh, Obi Ezekwesili and uh, ex governor of Ekiti, Fayoshe, they tweeted and damned the consequences because. Twitter ban in Nigeria cannot be effective because it is not backed up by the full weight of the law. It is an executive pronouncement. It does not have the backing of the law. This evening, Nigerians must understand that they do not understand the law. But here we are going to teach you how to understand it. Malami said he was going to prosecute offenders. In other words, if you tweet, you will be prosecuted, but all the Buhari support group, all the Janjaweed spokespeople, they are still on Twitter tweeting. That is the double standards of the Fulani. When we say that, uh, Lai Muhammad will say, oh, Namde Khan is he's spewing hate speech. It is not hate speech. All I'm trying to do is to highlight the double standards of the ruling Fulani Caliphate, because Fulani Caliphate are the people, they are the people ruling Nigeria. There is no Buhari, that is the fact of life. You can deceive yourselves all you like from now till the kingdom come. The truth of the matter is that Buhari is dead, buried in a shallow grave in Saudi Arabia. That is the truth of the matter. Sue me anywhere if you like, but of course not in the zoo 
God. We can earn anyway, down strike. I want to ask Malami, under which law of the Federation of Nigeria are you banning Twitter? Under which law? Are you now saying that executive pronouncement by whoever is the head of state or the president of the zoo becomes law? Is that what you're trying to imply? If that is the case, then that means you don't understand what Montesquieu went through in order to, 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 to put to paper his treaties on separation of powers. It means you did not go to school. You're not an AGF. It means, of course, you're a quarter lawyer, so you know nothing. Under which law, I asked the Fulani Janjaweed, including those in Asorok, because I know Buhari is not there, so maybe I will address Karaba Shehu, Femi Adeshino, maybe um, El Rufai, running the show from Kaduna, and of course, um, uh, Malami, and uh, what's his name again? The, uh, the so-called secretary to the government, or she's the chief of staff. Uh, what's his name again? The man from, from Kwara State. I don't know his name. I want to ask these people, Nigeria has three ways of making laws. The one in the Constitution of Nigeria, the one that they make at the National Assembly, and any judicial pronouncement in a court of law. These are the only three means by which any law can come into existence under the current jaundiced democratic rule that you have in Nigeria. So I'm asking them, where is it in your 1999 constitution or any statute of state that using Twitter is a crime? I want somebody to please try and tutor that very Janjaweed, the Attorney General of the Federation of the Zoological Republic called Malami, that an executive directive is not a law binding on the people. There is something some of you don't understand. When they say, come and register for NIN, all of you run and register for NIN, go and do BVN, do BVN. It is not backed up by the weight of the law. Therefore, it is not binding on everybody. I give you a very simple example. Remember most of the laws that most of the executive um, um, decisions that were taken by Donald Trump, how quickly they were reversed. And in most cases, some courts said they were not even... Um, 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 uphold it. It was turned down. It is not binding on the people. It is an executive decision. It is not a law. You can't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I am banning Twitter because of that. Nobody should use Twitter. Are you mad? Who are you? If Nigeria does not want Twitter in their territory, all they need to do is to go to the National Assembly and pass a law or a bill saying we no longer require the presence of Twitter in our land. That now becomes law, punishable by whatever thing that the law courts may deem fit. Only then will the use of Twitter be prosecutable. You cannot prosecute somebody based on executive Fiat, it is not done anywhere in the world. But because they are bullies, they do not understand the niceties of the law. Therefore, any instruction by those claiming they are Buhari or the Attorney General of a Buhari to arrest and to prosecute Nigerians still using Twitter is null and void because there is no law criminalizing the use of Twitter. And nobody, no president in a democracy <laughs> has the prerogative to make laws by virtue of his or her pronouncements. It is not done anywhere in the world. That is where you have a democracy. But of course, some of you in the cow republic, you don't understand what we're talking about. Some of you are not learned enough to appreciate what we are discussing this evening or this very gospel that I'm bringing to you, but that is a fact. You can be a president, you can issue directives, but you do not make the law. That is why you have the National Assembly, that is their job. Once they make a law, that law now becomes binding on everybody. That is how civilized people behave. You cannot ban anybody 
there is no law in the zoo criminalizing the use of Twitter. And whoever claims that he is Buhari cannot make any laws. He is an executive or the head of the executive branch. Their job is to implement and execute the laws. The duty of the courts is to interpret the law. I don't even know if these elementary uh, uh, government is, you know, if people are actually aware of it in Nigeria. I'm not even sure that people are aware of this very simple fact. The policy of this administration in the zoo to suspend Twitter's operations in Nigeria is not law. It is a policy. The constitution, the flawed constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria guarantees all Nigerians the right to free speech and freedom of association, freedom of expression. That is what I'm doing tonight, speaking my mind. You may disagree with it. Of course, the ginger with will, but the majority have over the years accepted it to be gospel and the fact. That is my opinion, and I am entitled to it. Something that the Flanagan ginger we do not understand. When I speak, they say it is hate speech. It is not hate speech. I am stating the obvious and I'm stating all these facts. I will buttress some of them with evidence as we progress this very evening. Therefore, everybody, if you are in Nigeria, please ignore the stupid threat that you'll be prosecuted if you go on Twitter. And all of them, they're on Twitter. They are on Twitter. All of them, they're on Twitter. They're still tweeting. When they call me on a of names, when they were calling IPOB misprints, they called us every vile name under the sun. Nobody complained of hate speech. When that fool on bleaching cream with two dots on his forehead were writing nonsense and calling me names, nobody pulled his tweets down. Nobody complained. Not at all. I don't complain because I take as much as I give, so I don't complain. People are entitled to the opinion. And I don't expect everybody to agree with me all the time, it is impossible. These people, because we stood up to them, because IPOB said enough is enough, because we formed Eastern Security Network to safeguard our land, our forest and our bushes and our farmlands for our people to go and farm, because we said to Fulan, you cannot conquer this land of the Asians. That is the only crime we committed. That is the only crime we committed. They went overboard. We are going to speak in the language you will understand. But Boko Haram, ISIS in West Africa, Ansaru, Miet Yala, Fulani foreign bandits, Fulani local bandits, Fulani terrorists in general, Al Qaeda in the Maghreb. These are all terror franchise run by Fulani people in Nigeria. That is a fact. It is not hate speech. It is a fact. These people in Asorok never spoke the language that Boko Haram understood. They never spoke the language that Fulani headsmen, the same people. What I find astonishing is that these people, they will ignore the timber, the tree in their own eyes and they'll be looking for a tiny speck of dust in your own. I want to ask Fulani Janjaweed, have you dealt with Boko Haram in their own language? Did you go to the north massacring people, abducting people, killing them, basically committing genocide in broad daylight as you're doing right now in the east? The answer is no. Throughout the years of full and a rampage through the middle belt. Have you ever read the riot acts to them? The answer is no. But the whole world, what I find astonishing is the hypocrisy of man. BBC, Twitter, uh, Facebook, all the rest of them, New York Post, everybody, Sky News. All of you are witnesses to this march of the Janjaweed across from the Sahel into the Middle Belt part of Nigeria, killing, slaughtering, and maiming people. All of you are aware. 
Nobody will ever say to Gareb Ashehu, why they did not read riot acts to Boko Haram to Fulani, your fellow, your fellow Mietiala, that you gave 100 billion to. Why didn't you read it today? Hey, uh, he read a riot act to IPOB. He read, oh, can't you? He, uh, the president has spoken. And, and when I say it, sometimes people take offense, but it is a fact of life that there is something fundamentally wrong with us. I've said this many times because I know that the owners of Twitter, they are listening to my broadcast this evening via that very platform. I want them to understand that I am also self-critical. We are our own worst enemies because of the way we reason, because of the way we think. And that is why black people are at the bottom of the pile all over the world, wherever you go to, because of how we reason. The same person trying to to address the issue of insecurity in the East in the language they will understand, failed to address his own people in the language they themselves will understand. Now, I believe that you're following what I'm saying. Please pay very close attention. When it comes to Biafrans, the Easterners, to Igbo people in particular, there is this great understanding, there is this unity of purpose that an Igbo man should be hated and killed if need be. It didn't start today. It started all the way back in 1945. And as most scholars and commentators have noted over the years, anywhere you go and you find hardworking people, people who are blessed by God, they attract envy. The only reason why those idiots like um, Garoba Shehu will be mouthing all their rubbish and saying, oh, we are going to, to, uh, to uh, speak the language they understand is because of their natural hatred for Biafran people. Is there anywhere in the world even the Armenian uh, massacre has been recognized by the US um, um, Congress as being a genocide worthy of note. We lost 5 million people. Some of you don't even ask yourself questions sometimes. How come their friends lost 5 million people yet nobody's talking about it? It's because of that palpable hatred all across the board for no reason. These are the demons that we are fighting on a daily basis. Now, you want to teach Biafrans a lesson or speak to them in the language they will understand, which is the language of genocide. That was the reason why uh, the tweet purportedly made by Buhari was taken down by Twitter. But let us just go back a little bit and at least put on our thinking cap this very evening, morning, you know, depending on where you are, and ask ourselves a very simple question. Who brought insecurity into Nigeria? Bandits killed 91 people by bandits. I mean, these are Fulani people. Fulani killed, Fulani terrorists killed 91 people in a place called Danko, Wasagu, local government area of Kebi State. And I want Twitter to listen very carefully to what I have to say. I want all the people listening all over the world to pay attention to what I have to say. The same people threatening to go and unleash genocide and mayhem in the East, in their own backyard, their own people, those referred to as legitimate stakeholders in the government, or should I say the governance of Nigeria, Miyeti Yala, we are busy slaughtering 91 people in Kebi State. Now it doesn't stop there. Who are those they are killing, you may ask? Is it not the North? Kebi State is mainly populated by Hausa people. The Fulani people are killing Hausa people in Kebi State. They are killing the Lerna people. They are killing the Busawa people. They are killing the Dukawa people. They are killing the Dakakari people. They are killing the Kambari people. They are killing the Gungawa people. They are killing the Kamuku ethnic nationality in Kebi. Are you listening to me? 
Later on, I will tell you why they're obsessed with dividing us. South is South, South, Niger Delta, Igbo, and all that rubbish. Because in the North, I'm telling you the truth, they are not one. Forget all the rubbish. Because what the Fulanese did very cleverly was to emasculate the political, economic, and social space within Nigeria. All the, should I say, media outlets in the North only have one agenda to throw out the Fulani narrative on a daily basis. Daily Trust, Premium Times, NTA, Channels Television, to an extent AIT, they are using Punch newspaper, intermittently they will use Vanguard, they will use Nation newspaper as they will. Now and again, in KB State, as they are busy telling you about Southeast and uh, South South, uh, Niger Delta and Igbo, Delta is not even all that rubbish. I want to tell you that in one single state in the North, the Fulani is a minority. And in that place that the Fulani people are a minority, they have gone on and killed 91 Hausa people. Are you following what I'm telling you? They have killed 91 Hausa people. You will not hear anybody ever. If it is anywhere else, they'll say, oh, they're killing uh, Fulani. What is happening to Fulani? But Fulani went into Kirby State, which doesn't belong to them, and killed 91 Hausa people. This happened two days ago. No, in fact, basically, on Saturday, very early morning on Saturday, it happened, happened yesterday. To be honest, the 5th of June, the police command in Kebi State on Saturday confirmed that bandits, they don't want them to be called terrorists. Because once they're called terrorists, you, you know, Boko Haram, ISIS in West Africa, Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb comes to mind, and Saru and um, Yetiala will come to mind. So you know what the government of Nigeria did through Lai Mohammed, their minister of information? They said to media houses, do not call them Fulani terrorists anymore. Just call them bandits. So that way the eyes of the people and the attention of the world will be deviated or deflected away from the real identity of these murderers and killers. It's a very simple strategy. Maybe it was Britain that advised them to do that. Maybe it's Catherine Alain that advised them to do that. I am telling the whole world only yesterday, as they were shouting about Southeast insecurity, we are going to kill, we'll bring in the army, we'll, we'll land aeroplane, we'll bomb everybody. In their own backyard, this same government is aiding and abating the full and slaughter of Hausa people. It's here now, it's not very clear. Bandits kill 91 people in Danko, Wasagulo, confirmed by the police. And who confirmed it? The public relations officer, the PRO, his name is DSP Nafiu Abubakar. He confirmed the figures and said all the victims were killed in eight different communities in the local government area. Eight, he said eight different communities. These are Fulani people killing Hausa people. Telling you the house of Fulani, that is why I keep wondering, I keep asking Nigerians all the time, what is in your brain? What sort of substance is in your brain? Is it the white matter that God created? Is it something else that is there? As they have now corralled all the media houses in the zoo to focus on the East. Fulani are busy killing Hausa people. They will come out and they'll say, oh, we are Hausa Fulani. But behind closed doors, they are slaughtering Hausa people. It is here now. Go and ask the DSP Nafiu Abubakar of Kebi State. He is the public relations officer of the police in Kebi State. He confirmed it. According to him, had 88 bodies 
and dispatched a detachment of operatives to maintain law and order in the affected communities, there is no bombardment. Like all, no, 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 not at all. Because they are all oh, the full and they know what they're doing. There is no bombardment. There is no shoot at sight order. There is no abduction of young men with tattoos on their body. No rape of women. No, no, not at all. This is in a state where 88 Hausa people were slaughtered by full and terrorists. Now tell me why any decent person would want to belong to such a country. I'm asking a very simple question. When Lai Mohammed complains about, about IPOB, Namdekan, all this Biafra agitation, tell me why any sensible person would not agitate to be free in a country where 91 people were slaughtered and there was no mention of it by the government. What is of concern to them is a, is a INEC building. That is what is of concern to them. Are you following me? Are you following what I'm saying? I hope people are following what I'm saying sequentially. A country where 91 people were slaughtered only yesterday, their concern is the East. Do you see how they roll? Because Fulani has an agenda. The agenda is to conquer all of you. But some of us are so foolish and so idiotic, we don't understand what their game plan is. If they do not have it in mind to conquer all of you, how come something as, as massive as the slaughter of 91 people did not elicit any comment from the so-called presidency? Tell me in which country anywhere in the world that such idiocy obtains. Only in Nigeria, when I say it, they say, he is a, he's a, he's a, he's insightful tweet. He's inciting violence. And you are the ones committing violence. Fulani, you are the ones that killed 91 Hausa people in Kepi State. You got me massaging them, say, oh, we are Hausa Fulani, but you're killing them. 88 bodies were recovered. Now, let me tell you that all the people that I mentioned earlier were being killed. The killings took place in Koro, Kimpi, Gaia, Dimi, Zutu, Rafingora, Igwenge villages, and in all Danko Wasagu local area of Kibi State. Are you following me? Now, the question that Twitter, I'm sure you people are listening to me this evening. The question you need to ask Lai Muhammad is this. Who killed those people in Kebi State? What is their identity? Because any time anything happens in the East, it's ESN, ESN, IPOB, ESN. You even find the Yoruba newspapers. I click up on your call. Without any investigation, they will say it's IPOB, ESN, IPOB, ESN. I want to ask Yoruba media, Yoruba journalists. You evil people, have you ever wondered or asked yourselves the people behind the slaughter of the innocent in Kebi State? Why couldn't you say it's me, Yala? The way you quickly say it's, it's, it's IPOB, it's ESN. It is that hatred. It is in your bone marrow, you cannot get rid of it. I am not talking about the freedom fighters we have in Europe, and I am talking about their journalists. Journalism from Europe land is pure venom designed to paralyze your thinking faculties and to render you useless. By the time they are done with you, Fulani will just walk you over. I want to ask European newspapers, how come you are saying it is bandits that kill people in Kebi State? Whereas anything that happens in the East is ESN, ESN, IPOB. Why? Do you see why I hate Nigeria? Do you see why I agitate for Biafra? Because you hate me for no reason, for speaking the truth. That is the only, do you hate me for no reason? Then why should I not seek a country of my own? given the level of hatred you have towards us. Daily Trust newspaper will be somewhere in Kaduna, 
something will happen maybe in Okigwe, and he will write to this IPOB ESN. He has never been to Okigwe before. I want the world to listen to what I'm saying. To understand the level of hatred directed towards Igbo Biafrans especially. To all Biafrans anyway. The other ones, they are treating them as if they are normal, but of course they are not. Fulani killed Hausa people. The same newspaper is writing Hausa Fulani. Hausa Fulani. I want to ask the whole world tonight. Who are the people responsible for the killing of 91 Hausa people in Kebi State? The answer is Fulani. And they know that they are terrified to write the truth. They are terrified to speak the truth. That is why I cannot be in the same country with you people. You people are evil. You are evil. You see evil and you support it. You keep your mouth shut. You want Tinubu to be president. And you are paying dearly for these mistakes you're making. As we proceed, I am going to bring to the attention of the world the damage that Yoruba journalism has done to Yoruba people. I will prove it tonight. On this noble platform, what we preach is the truth. You may not like it. But if you go back and reflect upon everything that I say, you will come to the realization that it is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. You may not like the way I deliver it. I give you that. I'm not too, I'm not too, I'm not too bothered about it. But ask yourself this question. Isn't Namde Kano speaking the truth? This evening, am I preaching the truth or not? Why is it anytime something happens without proper investigation, it is IPOB or ESN? But only yesterday, all of you in the zoo called Nigeria, you reported the massacre that took place in Kebbi State. My simple question tonight is to Punch newspaper, to Nation newspaper, to Vanguard, all the rest of you that are basically trotting out the flooding narrative every blessed day. I want to ask a simple question. Who are the perpetrators of that heinous crime in Kebbi State? Once you answer it truthfully, you will now understand why I am pursuing a sovereign state of Biafra. Because all of you are hypocrites. I want also, I Twitter, are you listening to me? Because they, they want to listen. Lai Muhammad told them, go and listen to him. You hear he, he, his hate filled speech tonight. And you ban him on Twitter as they bribed Facebook to try and suppress my page. And Twitter, you're listening. Uh, my happiness is that Twitter is owned by a white man. And white people are more objective when it comes to issues of this very nature. I don't want to go into the background of Mark Zuckerberger. That will take care of itself in time to come. But I'm sure that the owner of Twitter is a white man. So he is bound to be objective, at least. I want to also let the whole world understand what is happening in the north, in full and a controlled northern part of Nigeria. The core north, I call them the Arewa, the Janjaweed frontier of the north. What is happening? Do you know that Islamic leaders who are Fulani people are abducting Hausa people who are Christians and forcibly converting them to Islam and forcibly marrying them off to whoever that wants to take a Hausa Christian bride. Are you aware of that? No, you're not aware of it. Because some of you erroneously think that in the North, they're all Muslims. Is that what you're thinking? No, you're wrong. Islam is in the minority in the North. You'll be shocked to know this. Now, let me explain something to you. And I must thank InterSociety for bringing this to the attention of the world. Because they actually called for the prosecution of some Islamic leaders in Katsina State. The same state that they claim the dead Buhari, come, whoever is there, comes from. As in Buhari, of course, the late Buhari comes from, from Katsina. Do you know what they're doing in Katsina State? <laughs> Fulani, <laughs> Caliphate, uh, Islamic people there are kidnapping people, young women, most of them Hausa Christians, 
and forcibly converting them to Islam. It may sound far-fetched, but it is true. And I'm going to shock most of you this evening. There is a group in the North. They are called the Hausa Christian Foundation. H-A-C-F-O, HACFO for short. The Hausa Christian Foundation reported incidences of indiscriminate abduction of underage girls by Islamic leaders in Katsina State and forcing them to renounce their Christian faith to take up Islam. What they did to Leah Shoaib. To tell you that they are all in it together. This is what I want Yoruba media to understand. I know that some of them are Muslims. I understand that very well. But at least they are educated. They went to school. They are not quota products as you have in the North. Not at all. You have in the ginger with North, that is. Do you know what the group said? How are Christians what they said? The Nigerian government must sanction the Katsina Islamic leaders for indiscriminate abduction and forceful conversion of scores of Hausa Christians, especially girls of underage, to Islam. This is according to a statement issued on the 15th of April 2021 by the Hausa Christians Foundation. According to the group, there has been indiscriminate abduction of hundreds of Hausa girls and their forcible conversion to Islam. They abducted Hausa Christian girls who are under the school age of 16 are also forced into early marriage done outside the consent of their parents. This is happening in a place called Nigeria. These are the people that want to ban Twitter. These are the people that bought over Facebook. The same people that bought over Satlink in Israel because they were carrying our signal. These people. I'm asking all of you Nigerians, for goodness sake, when will you begin to reason and to learn? They claim, uh, are we not upholding the rule of law? So the rule of law in the North stipulates that you must abduct a little girl and forcibly convert her to Islam. This is happening. It is a report. Let me also ask those in Asorok, have you spoken to people of Katsina abducting little children uh, to, about the need to understand a particular language that you are about to speak to them? Have you done that? I want the world to understand how despicable, vile, and evil Nigeria is. That's what I'm trying to do. To let you understand what is happening in Nigeria as at this very present day. People must understand the game plan of the Fulani and I want Twitter to understand it. They will come with harassment. They will try to buy shares in Twitter. They will try to impose their own people as directors of the board of Twitter. They will try to get you to change your policies towards Nigeria. Because the Fulanis have a long-term goal. They know what they're looking for. They want the total Fulanization and Islamization of the geopolitical space called Nigeria. That's what they want. And they will never stop until they get it. They will never ever stop. This is something that I want you other people to understand. This is something I want middle belt on. In middle belt, you'll be taken. You'll be swallowed alive. I'm telling you, you will be taken. The only reason why this, this demonic fulanization is not in full swing is because of the activities of IPOB and Eastern Security Network. That's what is stopping them. If not by now, we would all be goners. The time now is five minutes to 8 p.m. in the land of Biafra. We are live and we are direct. It is also the same number, say, three minutes to the top of the hour, regardless of where you are. We are preaching a gospel that heaven asks us to speak and to preach about this very evening, and we must do so. People are saying, ESN, IPO, not people anyway, of course, the Janjaweed and those that hate their friends naturally. That's what they, they always do. They've been doing it since 1945. It's not new. The demonization of the East didn't start today. It's since 1945. And it's never going to stop. Even when we get our Biafra, it will never ever stop. It is inbred. 
how did we get to where we are today? I want to ask, people must listen very attentively, please. I want to ask the whole world. You're talking about ESN, you're talking about IPOB agitation and all that rubbish, the way we speak, eh, our violent talk. I want to ask the whole world, please. How did we get to where we are today? Number one question, I want to ask the zoo media, Nigerian journalists. In 2014, what did IPOB do to warrant the massacre of people in Onisha? And the Enugu, I hasten to add. In 2015, let me also ask, what did we do to deserve being massacred? on October and November of 2015. People talk about Nigeria as if it is one normal country or nation. No, it is not. Nigeria is a, is a gangland. It is, it is it's run by, by gangsters, basically. Masquerading as politicians. This is something that Twitter must understand. The world must understand it. It is a fact. Let me ask you, you see the Shia people, Shia uh, Muslims of El Zagzagi. What did they do to deserve to be massacred in Zaria? Were they violent? Were they carrying arms? Let me leave um, um, Shia. Let me come to IPOB once again. In 2016, I was in detention. I was in, in detention in Abuja. People gathered to remember 30th of May, 2016. They we got together in a place called Mbo. Or should I say at a place called Mbo? I have to be grammatically exact. To pray, to remember the dead, exactly what we did a few days ago. Do you know what happened? I want you, the world to understand. I hope Twitter can follow what I'm saying. I want mankind to understand. On the, on the eve, on the 29th, on the evening of the 29th of May, 2016, Nigerian army, Nigerian police went to a place called Mbo and killed over 1,000 people. Now you'll be wondering what did they do? What's their crime? Their only crime was to gather together to try to remember those that died between 67 and 1970. The army went there and shot over 1,000 people dead. Am I lying? Nigerian journalists, am I lying? After all, Amnesty published a report about it. A report was published by Amnesty International on this very massacre. I want to ask everybody then, was there any ESN, any arms anywhere? Was anybody carrying any guns or anything of that sort? It's only the flag. You shot people dead. Have you all forgotten? You zoo people, have you all forgotten what you did in 2016? Let us go to Abba. If you doubt me, go and look at the clip, and I want it everywhere tonight, please. The clip of um, that Al Jazeera journalist interviewing the late dead Buhari when the idiot was still alive. You know, sometimes I want to sound this my life, but it's not possible. I'm dealing with animals in a zoo. How can you be, how can you wear a suit and you be playing with monkeys? It's not possible now. You'll get dirty. So it's better you take off everything now and be naked like them and be swimming in the mud. Isn't that the best thing to do? Sometimes I come on air and I want to sound very statesman like, but it's not possible. Because we are dealing with vagabonds, to be honest with you. Why did I call them vagabonds? Listen to my reasons, please, before you castigate me. Those you massacred at Mpo in 2016, what did they do to you? Were they violent? Were they armed? Those that you criminalized for asking for self-determination, do you know that it is a deliberate policy of the Nigerian state with their new colonial handlers to be calling us secessionists? Sky News published an article a few days ago and called Sky News in the UK called IPOB a secessionist group. New York Post made the same mistake. Reuters, everybody calling us secessionists. Now, I want to ask them a simple question. Why is it that you don't refer to Scottish agitation for self-rule 
a secessionist movement. Oh, because they are white. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I do apologize. They are white. <laughs> what do we know? We are black monkeys. We know nothing. Nicola Sturgeon can agitate for a separate homeland for the Scottish people. Sky News will not call it secessionism. New York, New York Post will never ever target a secessionist movement, neither will CNN. But because in Africa, Biafrans are asking for the same thing that Scottish people are asking for, you now tag them secessionists. This is what is called very sublime racism, if you don't know. I will teach you and you will know. In Europe, it is called ethnic nationality. In Africa, it's called a tribe for the reason. I'm asking the whole world this evening, why is it that Nicola Sturgeon, the leader of the Scottish people, Asking for Scottish independence makes her, I don't even, they, they, they don't even have a name for her. If I ask for the same thing that Nicola Sturgeon is asking for, Namde Kano becomes a secessionist. How did we get to where we are today? Go and publish, please, everybody publish that very interview. Uh, I think it was Denise that was interviewing the late Buhari then. We were praying in Aba National High School in Aba. Twitter, are you listening to me? Before they ask you to ban me tomorrow morning. So you want to understand why we are upset, why we are angry, why we address Nigeria as a zoo. I'm not telling you the reason why. Or should I say the reasons why. We gathered in Aba to pray. National High School in Aba to pray. These are your newfound friends now, Nigerian police. They came, they opened fire and killed people. And I want to ask the Nigerian police that keep people, uh, uh, those playing uh, uh, inside National High School in Aba, were they carrying any guns? It's a simple question. Iba is that the governor of Abia State. All those people you shot dead, were they, in fact, they were even running away, you were and killing them. You put, you, you packed some of them, you thought they were dead, and you put them in a pit along. Aba Iguacha Expressway, and you pour that seed on them. Luckily, one person survived that very ordeal. I, I hope that Yoruba journalists are listening to me tonight. I hope you're listening very carefully and attentively. You want to understand why we're upset? I'm not telling you why we're angry and why we want Biafra. You packed, a, you thought they were dead. You shot so many people dead. You packed their bodies and dumped them in a burrow pit in order to make their identification impossible you pour that seed on them on their faces to disfigure them true or false we have a survivor of that very ordeal and his plight was well publicized i even think that cnn even carried the news at some point but you know one funny thing yoruba media never carried the news but when one nigeria they wanted to be good Nigerians. We all need to be good Nigerians. But they never carried the news of this grave injustice being done to a people. Are you following me? Why did we form Eastern Security Network? Why? You know, ESN, the, if you go now, ESN, the, the militant wing of IPOB, the, the armed wing of IPOB, that's what they're saying. That is why, to be honest with you, I don't give a damn who bans me or who doesn't. I don't give a toss. I must preach that which heaven have asked me to preach. How and why did we form Eastern Security Network? Why and how? What happened? Are you following me? What happened? We formed 
I think his name is Jack and of Twitter. Jack, the reason why we formed Eastern Security Network was because our mothers were being raped when they go to the farm. The, our daughters were being slaughtered, cut into pieces. Why did we form Eastern Security Network? Because our mothers were being killed and raped in the farms. Our fathers were being slaughtered. We can no longer go to the farm. Our forests and our bushes were unsafe. Was that not the reason why ESN was formed? I'm asking Yoruba journalists. Is it not the same reason why you formed Amoteku? Is that not the same reason why? Don't Amoteku carry pump, uh, 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 pump action? Is Amoteku not armed? Is anybody remotely suggesting that Amoteku is the armed wing of Yoruba liberation movement? I'm asking this question. Now, the thing is, these, you people, you are, you are Southerners, you are black people. Some of you are well read. But what I don't understand is why do you keep gravitating towards evil? Why do Yoruba journalists always want to support evil? I, don't, I can't understand it for a life. I don't know why they do that. Amodeku is armed, clashing with Fulani headsmen in your forest. Is that not correct? Anytime we drive away Flanet from our forest, you now come back to us and tell us that uh, we are uh, uh, armed wing of IPOB. Forgetting the reason why we formed it in the first place. What is happening in Oyo? There is massacre going on in Oyo. I'll get to I'll get to that later on. Do you know my happiness today? Miyetiala opened their mouth and said, we are no longer in the Southeast. That's what they said. And our people keep forgetting those that made it possible for these terrorists and murderers to leave our land. It is Eastern... Oh, it's because of Eastern Security Network. Eastern Security Network. That's the reason why. In case you don't know. IPOB made it possible. Do you know that it is only in the East, in Biafra land, that Niyeti Allah openly confessed and said, we no longer have a presence there in the whole of Nigeria. Only in Biafra land. Do you know why they said it? Because we drove them away from there. Eastern Security Network drove them away from there. Do you understand? They said that insecurity has persisted despite the fact that uh, we are no longer in the East. This is Miyetiala, the, the fourth most deadly terrorist group in the world, in the whole world. And I want Twitter to understand what I'm saying tonight. The fourth most deadly terror group in the world is Fulane Headsman. According to World, it's just the Global Terror Index. Go and Google it. The only place Fulani said we are no longer moving our cattle, raping and killing people is on Biafra land. And which people made it possible? Who are the ones that made it possible? Intellectual among them, who made it possible? I'm asking you. Something that all of them couldn't have done. We formed ESN December of last year, and by May of the next year, Fulani confessed we are no longer in the Southeast. Now tell me who is there killing people? Fulani soldiers, Fulani policemen, Fulani DSS. Because we defeated their foot soldiers, Miet Yala, they got upset. That is why you are seeing this level of disproportionate deployment of soldiers and police in the East. Fulani is upset. They have taken over parts of Yoruba land. <laughs> they, are, they are comfortable. Can't you see that they are not worried about Yoruba agitation? They are not worried. They know where the problem is, is in the East. Are you following me? <laughs> They are not in our forest, so if we find them, they are gone. They cannot be there, and they understand it. 
full and they must know that we are more stubborn than they are. The only reason why it seems sometimes that full and they have the leeway is because the Yorubas are afraid of them. Yoruba, not, not the Sundebohos of this world, they are very brave. Not the Ghanaians of this world are very brave. Fanny Kayode, given what has been very brave. Fayoshe, a very brave man. Yinko Dumakin, my late friend, a very brave man. And of course, Paya Debanjo, very, very brave. When that man speaks, I, I want to borrow him and bring him down to the East. Paya Debanjo. They have brave people there. But the rest, I, I don't know. I have no idea. Today, what they are doing by attacking Twitter and uh, buying over Facebook, they want to change the narrative. They full on a ginger weed. They want to change the narrative. Every blessed day, they want the world to believe that we in the East are the aggressors, that they are just the victims. And I want the world to ask them a simple question. Who we are the sponsors and founders of Boko Haram? Who are the sponsors and founders of ISIS in West Africa? Before then, who are the founders and sponsors of Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb? Who are the sponsors of Ansaru? Who are the sponsors of Fulani headsmen? Who are the sponsors of even the foreign bandits that I'm talking about? How many terror groups have I named for you now? All exclusively Fulani owned. Yet, their focus is in the East. I want the world to understand something today because all of you are listening. Nobody hates the police or the army anywhere in the world. But I need you to understand something that in Nigeria, you don't have an army. What you have is a full army, fully fullanized terror machine in uniform. A, terror, a gang of, of murderers in uniform. That's all you have. I'll prove it to you later. We are not going to allow the fallen to change the narrative. That is why they're upset. They have managed to subdue everybody else in the zoo, apart from IPOB and ESN. They cannot, and they know they cannot. It doesn't matter how many people we lose. It does, we don't care. We keep going. I lost my mom and my dad, and we are still marching on, aren't we? I lost 28 men, very close. We are still marching on. I lost a cousin, Adako, to Nigerian army. We are still marching on. We are not going to stop. So you understand it very clearly. Now, listen to me, please. The reason why, anytime you see them, hey, POB, what they are doing, they want to break the country. The elders must rise up and speak. All those fools. Let me tell you something you don't know. We are the way we are because you made us so. Your hatred for me is what conditioned me over the years to react to you the way that I'm reacting to you because you are evil. Nigeria is an evil entity. Very, very satanic. You want to change the narrative. It's IPOB, they are the aggressors. Uh, we, I saw some women, was it yesterday? Uh, give them their Biafra. Uh, we don't want to die. Look at murderers calling other people murderers. Can you believe such nonsense? The Fulani leaders, you cannot win. You cannot defeat IPOB. You people were the ones that established many terror organizations in Nigeria. You may bid to overwhelm the country and take over the territories for your Fulani people. IPOB became a stumbling block to that very Janjaweed expansionist tendency. Two or false. Am I lying? You were ruling Nigeria before, doing everything you like, controlling NMPC, controlling the seaport, customs, everywhere you ever. Now, finally, because you felt that you, 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 you subdued everybody else, now you can now march on with your foot soldiers into the east. Because you've taken over Yoruba land, of course, I know that very well. You came and we said, no, you can't come into this land to take it. Come and do your business and go. You said, no. Now, because we defeated Miet Yala, you now brought in police and army with official uniform, official badge to come and kill people. And I also want to remind Twitter because they're listening. Twitter, please. Do you know that in the Nigerian army and police, there are terrorists there? Are you aware? 
that Nigeria actively recruited terrorists, killers and murderers and rapists and gave them army and police uniforms. Are you aware of that? How can anybody, Yoruba, Yoruba journalists, how can you people in your infantile stupidity refer to Nigeria as having an army or Nigeria police? Or where are those terrorists that they conscripted into the Nigerian army and Nigeria police? Where are they? People without shame, where are they? I'm asking you. Fulani, you want to change the narrative? <laughs> of course not. They want to put the blame of insecurity in Nigeria on IPOB. Can you believe that? Can you believe these people? Can you believe them? Can you believe these people? And luckily, as God will have it, they are slaughtering themselves in the north. But IPOB securing the east are the ones to be blamed for the insecurity in the east. There is a clip I want everybody to play, please. Who opposed to them opened his mouth and said, I invited the army to come into Olo. There was nothing happening. Fulani, the who opposed to them gave Fulani land in Olo to do Ruga, Fulani settlement. And we said no. We drove the Fulani murderers and, and, and terrorists away. Who opposed to them now invited his friends, his masters from the north, to bring in their army and heavy machinery into all to kill us. That was how all these things started. All of you, you have forgotten. You my black people in this UG, black, you have all forgotten the Genesis. The same way that all of you that are blaming, Boko Haram is a terrorist group, Boko Haram, what they're doing. But when Nigerian police were busy killing their leader and killing everybody else, all of you were just there drinking Fradununu. Or uh, doing uh, uh, betting on Chelsea versus Man U or Liverpool versus Man City. Nigeria army and police will go out and commit atrocity upon atrocity. All of you will be there, you keep quiet. Any day, those people out of anger rise up and retaliate. All of you baboons and monkeys without writing rubbish. Do you know why? Because you have no conscience, you have no soul, you're a black person, you are the embodiment of evil. Is the truth. I don't care who bans whoever or whatever, I don't give a toss. I must preach the truth. Black people are wicked, by nature, very wicked people. That is why you forget the atrocities that your police and your army always commit. You forget. In a twinkle of an eye, you forget. Our army, our police. Now, listen to me very carefully, please. You are blaming ESN, whereas it is the same Fulani terrorist masquerading as headsmen that, that are responsible for orchestrating all the insecurity in and around Nigeria. Fulani, you have Boko Haram. Fulani, you're talking about insecurity in the East. Hey. Whereas 91 people were slaughtered yesterday, yesterday they were killed yesterday. You, you have the God. You people have no shame. You have the God to stand up and be talking about his security in the East. And you're, you're a senator from, from KB State or KB, whatever they call it. And 91 of your constituents were slaughtered. You didn't see it. You're talking about uh, East. Fulani, who formed Boko Haram? Fulani, who formed ISIS in West Africa province? Iswap. Fulani, who formed Miet Yala? Fulani, who formed Ansaru? Fulani, who formed these headsmen and bandits you claim are foreign? Fulani, who brought out murderers and killers and terrorists from prison and gave them military and police uniforms? It is you people. You have now spread them around the country, causing mayhem, abducting people from schools. These are the same play. Hi, this people there. Ha, Fulani, you think everybody's as stupid as you are? You go, you kidnap students from their schools in the north, you get ransom, you buy more, more, more arms, you embolden yourselves. You have the guts to, 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 to conduct a live press conference. 
talking about insecurity in the East. Don't you have shame? Anyway, you don't. Who are the bandits, or should I say terrorists, taking hostages of school children and demanding ransom? Are they not Mieti Yala? <laughs> Mieti, the chief negotiator. Who are the people destroying farms, raping and killing their victims daily around Nigeria? Fulani. Fulani. You know what? How they managed to convince some of you is what I find astonishing. Despite the overwhelming evidence, how they manage to convince you people that they mean well for you is something I can't understand. It was in Nigeria that I discovered the reason why the black race were enslaved and colonized at the same time. After slavery came colonization. After colonization, now we are in the era of neo colonization. If you want to know why a black man is easier to control than, a, than an animal, come to Nigeria, you will see it. You see, Punch newspaper is a Yoruba newspaper, Tribune is Yoruba, Nation is Yoruba. In fact, most major newspapers, they have this Yoruba leaning because most of them are based in and around Lagos, including Sun, Vanguard, all the rest of them. <laughs> Unbelievable. They know that their forests and their lands have been taken over by the Fulani. The journalist writing the rubbish for Punch newspaper, he cannot go back to his village. Most of them in Ogun State are refugees in Benin Republic. The person you will have the gut to come on on national television to talk about insecurity in the East, whereas your fellow Yoruba people they are in Benin Republic as refugees driven away by Fulani. But because I said that no Biafran will go and dwell in a refugee camp anywhere. Instead, we all perish. You are calling me uh, uh, the instigator of um, insecurity. Let me tell my Yoruba journalists one thing they don't understand. If we had behaved like you people, by today, we will have their friends in Ambazonia as IDPs. If we had allowed the Fulani to come into us playing this one Nigeria, good one Nigerian card, our land and our forest would have been taken over by the Fulani the same way they have now taken over swathes of Yoruba land. Are you following? In your land, the Fulani people are massacring you. In our land, it is there. We have defeated their foot soldiers. They now brought in, gave them army uniform, official army uniform to come to kill in our land. That's what we are facing now. Because the Fulani is the thing that clever. But they are not. One day we will get one terrorist with uniform and we will show the whole world what they have been doing. Fulani terrorists are everywhere. You must understand. They are the military and the police. Nigeria has no military, it has no police. What you have are terrorists, full and terrorists in uniform. That's what you have. No full and leader. I have never come across any full and leader condemn me yet, Yala. Never, ever, ever. But one of them, the East must speak up. Silence is no longer golden. Speak up now. Speak up now. Have you ever spoken up against me yet, Yala? Have you spoken in the past against them? against your friends in Boko Haram and ISIS in West Africa that are considered even more deadly than Boko Haram. No, you have not. But you want Eastern leaders to rise up and speak against those that drove away your terrorists from our forests. Does that make any sense to you? Of course not. No foreign leader has ever condemned what their people are doing. The same people are today threatening us. Flanny rulers trade with genocide. Uh, activities of ESN is the reason why we are coming. You are angry because we defeated your foot soldiers in the forest. We drove you terrorists away from our land. 
That is why you upset. Once in a while, you give them uniform, army uniform to come and kill people. That's all you do. Any day we respond now, we capture them or we kill them, you run to Twitter. Can you see they're killing Nigerian uh, 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 soldiers and the police, uh, our uh, uh, security architecture? But you cannot speak the truth by telling the whole world that these same people were once terrorists or are still they are all terrorists even till now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you see why we are agitating for Biafra? Why we don't believe in Nigeria? Why Nigeria will be destroyed beyond repair? Because Nigeria is a criminal enclave. It is not a nation, it is not a country. It is a place full of black people who cannot reason properly. It's as simple as that. Because if you can reason properly, if you can reason properly, please, you can see the handwriting on the wall. Who are the terrorists in Nigeria? Who brought in security into Nigeria? Is it on the full line? Without Fulani people raping and killing in our land, also one in case you have forgotten, Nimbo in case you have forgotten, in Ebony, in Cross River, in rivers everywhere they were killing, pillaging, raping and looting. Have you all forgotten why ESN came? You have all cleverly forgotten. Black people, this UG. And they are so-called political elites. Everybody wants to be politically correct. Everybody wants to be political correct. Everybody wants to please Fulani because of 2023, because they control INEC, they control CBN, they control everything. Your political future. In fact, if they can put this on their mind power, who what can they not do? All of you we are there claiming this is our nation, Nigeria, without shape. You people, you disgust me. Supreme Court of Nigeria imposed a man on the people of Yuma. A man that came forth during election. He was imposed. And they asked Supreme Court, oh Supreme Court of Nigeria, where did you get all this number of voters? Given the fact that INEC register doesn't tally with the figures you're pronouncing. And by law, the same INEC they claimed they met a few days ago. We are not happy. Uh, our offices are being burned. What is happening now is not good. The same INEC that you charged by law to conduct elections went to the Supreme Court and said to the judges, the figures you're using, they are wrong. The judges said our decision is final. Hope the is the governor of Fimo State. And you want people to accept that rubbish? You must be mad. You must be mad. What we are doing is to teach the next generation how to defend their lives. ESN was born out of the need for self-defense. And we have done a very marvelous job. That even Miyet Yala confessed. Anywhere you see people claiming they are flying, these are terrorists that they brought in and gave them uniform to go and kill. That's all. To go and kill. And I want Yoruba media to listen to me very attentively now, please. You see, there is a prayer I always pray, and I will say it in Igbo language, the oldest language in the world. Maybe that is why Britain hates us so much, because we are the oldest people on the face of this very earth, in the Igbo, Asian people. And that is the center of the world as well. I'm sure you know that by now. Zero longitude and zero latitude. You know that the, the Greenwich Mean Time is one hour to the left. It's not the proper central time of the world. The proper central time of the world is where the zero longitude line meets the zero latitude line, which is in Biafran waters, for your information. <laughs> so you know, we are the center of the world. That's why we have the H-E-O-Y. The very first place that the light of God had to shine on this very earth. Ganyadams, Eba, Ganyadams, the are on Akakamfo of Yoruba land. On Sunday said, that's today, with the killing of over 50 people in the Eganga town, Ibarakba, Okugun area of our state, it is evident that war is imminent in the country. Please tweet and listen to me. Who killed Yoruba people in Oyo? Are they bringing... Oh, 
You know, sometimes some intellectuals and philosophers they, they prefer they, they look for their own to blame all the time. I want to ask them a question. The are the the war commander, the generalissimo of Yoruba land is Ebagani Adams. Today, today, earlier today, he said that war is imminent in the country. A Yoruba man. Why is he saying it? Because 50 people were slaughtered in Oyo State, in Yoruba land. But a Yoruba journalist writing for Punch or writing for whoever is still talking about one Nigeria. Our country, Nigeria, this is our nation. Let's move forward. But in his village, people are falling down like flies. Are you following? I want to ask the world now, who are the people responsible for the slaughter? I, yesterday was uh, 91. Oh, today is 50. You know, yeah. <laughs> one Nigeria, isn't it? <laughs> Let's move our country forward. We, we Nigerians, we have to, to attack Twitter. We Nigerians. Fulani is singing the mantra of one Nigeria and you're joining them facing the altar, singing one Nigeria from the back, they are slaughtering you from the back. They are slaughtering you from the back. The young, when you speak, yeah, it's, it's head speech, it's incendiary, it's insightful. They bought over Google, you know? <laughs> Nigeria bought Google. <laughs> they put in so much money in Google. You don't know that. Because of um, IPOB, and then I'm the can. <laughs> so much money in Google. If you go to Google now, the number one, if you Google Nam the Khan, if you go to Google and you write in Nam the Khan, the first thing you will see, Nam the Khan is it removed for insightful statement. <laughs> Up to four or five. Every other thing I say, no, 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 no. Uh, mankind is evil, honestly speaking. I'm telling you the truth. Even Google was bought over. They, they bought over. That one loves money. They gave him money, Zuka Baga. And he took money and handed over Facebook to Lai Mohammed in the zoo. Anything you write. If they kill us, you publish the pictures. No, they ban you. You talk about it and they ban you. That is why everybody must be on Twitter. I've told you that before. And the events of the past few days have justified my call for each and every one of you to go and open a Twitter account. Be on Twitter. Everybody must be on Twitter. That's where you do the damage to the zoo. That is why they are crying and complaining and lamenting every blessed day. I hear about John. I will not let him go. Forget all the nonsense, all the noise on the pages of newspapers and all that rubbish and on, on channels. Ask about Bunkum. I see if it will matter to us. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me what you write, what you say, what you gossip is irrelevant to me. You know that very well, don't you? Eba Ghani Adam said, he condemned the gruesome murder of innocent residents of the town and warned Fulani headsmen and bandits to stay away from the southwest or be ready to face stiff resistance. Aha! Tomorrow now, when maybe uh, OPC, uh, when they now get together to resist the Fulani, you claim that OPC is looking for war. But Fulani is out there now slaughtering them, isn't it? All of you are hypocrites. The killings happened in the early hours of Sunday and brought the entire Igaga town and its environments to and its environs to its knees with over, over 50 people dead, cars burnt, and over 20 houses burnt. That's their signature. Burning of houses. Let me do you, do you people know who actually brought in burning of houses into the uh, should I say the thinking or mindset of Nigerians? Do you know who brought it in? Is the army Nigerian army? They are the ones. They go to your house. They kill you <laughs> if they, if they, if, they, if you escape. <laughs> they burn your house down. The same barrister Joffo. They attacked his house again last night to kill him. They came. Was it not him um, last year? And burnt his house. Do you know that Nigeria army went to Fela's house in those days? People talk about unknown gunmen, unknown goat, unknown cow, unknown pig. Who started the phenomenon, the phenomenon of unknown? Nigerian government under Obasanjo. They sent soldiers to go and kill Fela and his mom. They went to Fela's house 
after causing the death of the mother, of course, they burnt the place down. Nigerian army. They asked them, who did it? They said, unknown soldiers. All of you have forgotten. These are black people that don't read. You, know, you don't even know history. They asked Obasanjo, who were the people responsible for invading Fela's home, Fela and Nicola Bokuti, his home? They said is unknown soldiers. <laughs> oh dear me, Nigeria. You see Obasanjo tomorrow, this insecurity is getting out of hand. Obasanjo, did you know certain security by sending soldiers to go to Fela's house what crime did Fela commit? He was singing and expressing his natural, his God-given right to speak his mind. Oh, Basanjo, you today, talking rubbish, insecurity, and uh, we need the bitterness in the land. Why did you send soldiers to go and kill Fela and the mom? When they failed, they burnt the place down. Nigerian army, yes. It was Nigerian army that started uh, this very, uh, uh, the concept of burning down people's houses. Nigerian army, yes, Nigerian army, yes, the army of Nigeria. Our boys, as some of you will foolishly claim now and again. They killed Yoruba people 50 yesterday. The same way they went to Benue State and killed Igbo people the other day. When we go there now to confront them, people say, hey, ESN is here. They're, they're destabilizing the polity. They're oh, talking rubbish. Why is it that when Fulani people are killing people, all of you are quiet? When the people rise up to retaliate, you start talking rubbish. All of you. You start writing to Twitter. Uh, Lai Mohammed was upset because he wrote to Twitter on four occasions for Twitter to ban my account. And Twitter said no. You don't know that? Four times they wrote, Ministry of Information and Culture, signed by Lai Mohammed to Twitter, ban Namde Khan. The Twitter said no on four occasions. <laughs> uh, but they called Facebook. You know, Facebook, uh, they, they, they have Nigerians working for them. <laughs> Bribery and corruption gave them money. Anything you see that is Biafra, pull it down. And the idiot doing work for Facebook, pulling all Biafra posts down in his village in Ibarapa, they have killed 50 people. <laughs> I can see the gabun on. I can see that hand with which you have used to write that poisonous epistle on the pages of Punch newspaper. You will put it in, inside your mouth and you become contaminated. A Baraba is an example. Yoruba land is under siege by the Fulani. <laughs> and you are writing about the East. I know that um, Ibagani Adams will do the obvious. They even destroyed the palace of the Oba of Ashigagan, of Igagaland. Oba Adewusi Olaoye. His house was not spared. And the monarch has been whisked away by the bandits. They even took a Yoruba traditional ruler, an Oba in Yoruba land, Fulani. Your friends, eh? <laughs> Your friends in one Nigeria, keeping Nigeria one, moving ahead, yes? <laughs> they took your Oba. Fulani bandits took your Oba. In the East, you have their soldiers disgracing our traditional rulers, as they did in the coastal region. They know what they are doing. Can they do that thing to an Emma in the North? Can they try it? Of course, the answer is no. Because all of you people, you tolerate Fulani Janja Buddhism under the guise of one Nigeria. They are flying your flag, green, white, green in front of you. But inside, are inside they are destroying you. But you don't know. Very, very sad indeed. It's, it's very difficult to sound presidential or to sound statesman-like when you're discussing Nigeria because the whole place is disgusting. Nigeria is disgusting. They, they never spoke the language that they're terror. Why don't you now come out and say the, the killing in all your state is bad? We are going to treat them in a language uh, they understand. Why not? It's only in the East. And Yoruba journalists, they support this junk coming from these people. That is the reason why they come to your land and they massacre people. Because they support evil. Tinubu has to be president. <laughs> People are jokers. 
that Biafrans are not in IDP camps today or refugee camps is because of the immense work that ESN is doing. And for record, ESN is in the bushes and forests of Biafra land. We are not out on the street. All of you trying your best to link ESN with um, unknown gunmen, you're wasting your time. If you want to know how unknown gunmen we are born, go and look at all the atrocities of the Nigerian army and police against young people in the East. You'll understand that. ESN is inside the bush, making it possible for you to sleep at night. ESN is not and will never be unknown gunmen. And without myself excusing the activities of these angry youths that have had their relatives murdered by the Nigerian state, it is the same Nigerian police and army that are complaining today that in, uh, brought this brutality and lawlessness. And I'll ask them again, oh, what did those people do to you? Onesha, Emene in Enugu, have you all forgotten? Mbama River in Bayelsa. All the massacres you have carried out against young people in the East. What was their crime? What offense did they commit? To warrant you to go to where they are praying and kill them. Nobody can answer that question. You think because you have money, you can bribe Reuters and bribe AFP and bribe Sky News and CNN and bribe the Yoruba media and all that rubbish. You silence us, you're mad, you are insane, you cannot do it. There is something called the internet. Even if you ban us here, we go somewhere else. It doesn't matter, our message will keep going. Our message will keep going. Nigeria will buy over every company in the world and our message will still be passed down to the people that need it most. ESN is not unknown gunmen and can never be. But we know how unknown gunmen started. Every day you kill people and you go scot free. Today they have gone to a Jafar's house. They have shot dead a young man there today. When his relatives rise up tomorrow, pick up arms and start killing police, you start talking rubbish. Iraqo, you know, you'll be talking jazz from your stupid, stinking zoom out. You'll be talking rubbish. Nobody has condemned the killing of a young man in Barista Jofo's house last night around 2.30 a.m. In fact, this morning, early this morning, have you written about him? Now, the family of that boy will be asking, what did he do wrong? Did he commit any crime? So his crime is that he's in Barista Jofo's house and you killed him. Tomorrow, when his brother or sister will pick up arms and start fighting the police, all of you, I don't know how to describe you demons. All of you demons will start right, talking your usual crap and rubbish. Zoo animals. They came to Ejofo's house and picked up people for no reason. Now, Ejofo is a barrister registered with uh, zoo courts and all the rest of it, doing his work as an attorney. What crime did he commit? What was his crime, I'm asking you? You want to kill him because he's in Nam Dekano's attorney. These are the people you want to be in the same country with. When they have an issue with you, they're going to kill your lawyer. Look at Barista Okarafu that exposed the abduction, uh, that exposed the genocide that took place in Obibo. They threw a hand grenade into the mother's car and blew the woman up. Okorafon went to go and bury the mother. They came there and they shot him as well. Luckily, he, he managed to escape with a bullet wound on his foot. His right leg. Are you aware of it? Tomorrow they say, our police are being attacked. Our army are being attacked. All that rubbish. When your army is busy attacking innocent people, all of you demonic animals in the zoo called Nigeria, you call... Any, next time you see your Basanjo, please ask him who brought unknown into the killings in Nigeria. He will tell you he did. Unknown soldiers going to Fela's house. Who burnt uh, uh, Fela's um, house? Is it Calakuta Republic or whatever it's called? Unknown soldiers.
<laughs> Under Basanjo. That's Nigeria for you. They started the insecurity. Fulani, this very regime of, of, of nepotism, this regime of backwardness, this feudal regime of mediocrity, they are the ones that started insecurity in Nigeria. Wicked souls. Wicked, wicked souls. Every time they deny. Let me tell you something about, you know, Ahmed Gulak that was killed. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to go into it because um, there was a man in the vehicle. He's, he, is, he is an Ogoni man. An Ogoni man was with Ahmed Gulak in his vehicle. You know, they don't do research, but we do. You know, the Ahmed Gulak, the reason why they're killing everybody in the East. He was with another man riding in the vehicle. Where is that man? And I want him to speak publicly and tell the whole world what he told the police about the identity of the killers of Ahmed Gulak. There was a man riding, I don't want to mention your name. If you don't make a public statement within two days, I will mention your name. This man witnessed the assassination of Ahmed Gulak firsthand. And the man said to the police, he told the IG of police, the assassins were not evil. I want somebody to ask the police commissioner of Imo State to also ask the IG of police of Nigeria, did they get a first hand, a first hand account of what happened from a man that was riding in the same vehicle with Ahmed Gulak? Yes or no? It's a simple question. You know, zoo journalists, they're very lazy. I want them to go and ask the IG of police, was there any man riding in the same vehicle as Ahmed Gulak when he was killed? Did that man give you a statement? And what did his statement say? I am telling the world today that the man told the IG of police that those that killed Ahmed Gulak are not evil people. True or false? But all of you are busy writing rubbish. Uh, daily boss, all these idiots writing junk. You think you want to stifle Biafra? You think you want to delay the coming of Biafra? You think you can stop Biafra from coming, but you're wasting your time. The more you write rubbish, the more your village is being taken over by Fulani people. Hausa people, remember when you used to be called Hausa Fulani? We Hausa Fulani, but uh, Fulani, <laughs> they went to Kebi State and slaughtered Hausa people. But they're doing Hausa Fulani. As brothers, we house a Fulani, but in Kirby State, house of people were murdered by Fulani. You people don't learn anything. As I said, there is something wrong with the brain of black people, especially those of you from Nigeria. There is something definitely wrong with your brain. I'm telling you the truth. You are not normal. You can never be with the way you reason. I don't want to mention names, but that man, you must come forward to tell the world what is going on and to tell you how clever the full anything they are you know britain helped them to suppress biafra by denying ojuku access to world media then okay they're secessionist says you know <laughs> Oyubu are very clever people though <laughs> they're very clever i'm telling you the truth there are people in california in america called cal exit they want california to break away from the USA. They're not being called secessionists. They block Quebecois in, 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 in um, French um, Canada. Nobody's calling them secessionists because they're white. <laughs> but a white man came to my land and formed a country for me without my consent. And I'm saying to the Yubo man, <laughs> Beture, this thing you formed here is not with my consent. I want to leave it. He's saying I'm a secessionist. I should be killed. He is a secessionist. Kill him. 
Betulia said I should be killed because uh, I challenged him and I said, this thing you created here is not a country for me. I can't go to Europe to create a country for you, white man. Why must you come to Africa to create a country for me? And give me a very useless name, <laughs> Nigeria. It doesn't make any sense. It's an, it's a, in fact, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a racial slur word. He's telling me, you are a secessionist. But uh, Scotland wants to be free from England, and very soon Wales will join. Why is it that Scottish people are not called secessionists and the armies of Britain there slaughtering Scottish people? Why not? And then I realized they are white. That's the way, that's the way it is. No wonder people put on bleaching cream. <laughs> Sometimes when you look at uh, black people, you know the way we reason is a bit strange. <laughs> you can't buy one unku cream and add bleach to it and be rubbing it on your body to be white. <laughs> because I, I, I don't blame them, to be honest with you. I, I just don't blame them. The way we reason is, is quite astonishing. Nobody can ask them, punch newspaper that hardened Yoruba or, or, or Fulani Janjaweed paper. Can never ask anybody. How come Nicola Sturgeon is not a secessionist? He, he's not, she's not being called a separatist. Why not? After all, IPOB is a peaceful movement. All we asked for was for a referendum. The same thing that Nicola Sturgeon is asking for. But Nicola Sturgeon, a white woman, is, <laughs> is um, I don't know, a Scottish nationalist. I think Nam De Kano is not a Biafran nationalist, but a secessionist because I was created by a white man. And who are you, uh, black nigger, to say no to what a white man created? Who are you? That's the stage we are in right now. I like Michael Jackson now. I love his music. He was the greatest entertainer in the history of man. The best dancer ever. When Michael Jackson was bleaching his cream and threatening his nose, I didn't blame him. I never did. How can I blame him? <laughs> With what is black misogy? How can you stay in a country where people claim they are learning, that they went to school? They brought in somebody who did Sharia court, Alekali in a local Sharia court, and made him the chief justice of the federation. And all of you are there. If I have a knife, I'll cut off. If it's possible, I'll just cut off my own skin completely. Cut it off. Black people, they make me sick because of the way we reason. We do not reason like human beings. I'm telling you the truth. And that is why I am upset. I am as upset as I am. Do you know that the same Punch newspaper? Punch. You know, I've been mentioning their name. You will hear what will happen to them. Punch newspaper. <laughs> Go and ask her. If I lay a curse on you, you're finished. Do you know that Punch newspaper published what a terrorist, a, the fourth most deadliest terrorist group in the world said? Secessionists, not headers, responsible for security crisis. A terrorist saying that people who are seeking, they don't even want to say that we are a group of people seeking self-determination. No, it's not for you. You're black. A white man created Nigeria. A white woman named it, gave it the name that it's bearing today. Who are you, a black nigger, to go and change it? Who are you? You're black, you're a nigger. So that is why you're a secessionist. Not uh, somebody who is agitating for self-determination. Unbelievable. Miet Yala said that uh, people asking for freedom are responsible for security crisis, not them. But they are in Benue State slaughtering people. The same people, they... Miet Yala said that Benue is, is theirs by right of conquest. No DSS invited them. But today, DSS invited um, Fadam Baka. And some of our people are clapping. You know, the, the foolishness, I mean, I don't know what is wrong with some people, you know. Mbaka is a cleric. 
Gumi is a cleric. I won't call him Sheikh because he's, he's, he's not Arab, so I can call him a Sheikh. Gumi is a cleric. Quranic, um, Quran, a scholar of the Quran. Gumi can go and sit down with murderers and killers and rapists and discuss with them. Nothing will happen to him. Fadam Baka only criticized the government and they invited him. And that is the type of country that you want me to be in with you people. You must be joking. You must be joking. Our land is under siege because we are in a state of war, undeclared war. And in the coming days and weeks, a state of emergency will be declared in our land because, and I want our people to understand this very, very clearly. I want them to understand this very, very clearly that a meeting is being held, a meeting is being held or will be held in Oweri or there are, no, in Enugu in the next few days on Tuesday. I think they said that their defense minister is coming to address them with some governors and some politicians from the East. Is coming to address them. Very, very sad indeed. And under this very climate, they have declared a state of emergency already because they are killing people. They went to a Geoffrey's house last night. They are killing people. And it is very, very sad indeed. They're extremely sad that they are killing people in our land. And uh, the so-called powers that be, those they claim, we are leaders, we are leaders, are encouraging them to keep killing. Look at the words of um, or George Obioso. Oh, my goodness. Some people are not even fit to be fathers, talkless of being elders, I'm telling you the truth. Very, very shameful. Very, very shameful indeed. Very, very shameful. I have a very important announcement to make this evening. And if you like, you listen. If you like, don't listen. That is your business. But I must make the announcement anyway. And it is for our young men and women across Biafra land because right now we are in a state of war in Biafra land. This evening we heard that a Hercules C-130 Air Force plane landed at Samumba International Airport and they brought in more murderers and killers, more terrorists from the Sahel to come into our land to kill us wearing police and army uniform. Any policeman you see on the streets, any soldier you see on the street is a terrorist. And you must approach them the way you would approach any terrorist group in the world. The Nigeria Army and Nigeria Police in the East, they are essentially a terrorist organization, only that they are wearing official state-sanctioned uniform. Now, listen to me carefully. If you are in Anambra State especially, I am advising every young man, woman, boy or girl to leave Anambra State or to go into the bush. I'm warning you, I warned you during NSAS regarding Obibo. Some of you didn't listen and today you are in the grave. I'm warning people in Anambra in the coming days, within the next 48 hours, very heavy rain is going to fall across the entire East. If you're a young person, prepare right now to either go to the bush to join your fellow men or to leave an state completely because what these people do is that they set up their roadblocks or their checkpoints. Any young person they see, they kill. They abduct you and they kill you. Bend the road, you know my head, the road, you know my head, I do the same thing. Every checkpoint, they stop every vehicle. If you're a young man or a young girl with a tattoo on your body, you are dead. And your organs will be hacked off and sold to the British and to Indians. You'll be dead. If you have a tattoo right now on your body anywhere in the East, you might as well start wearing a suit or dressing up like a priest. Because if they see a tattoo on your body, they will kill you. That's what they've been doing. Some of you are also aware of the dead bodies in the mortuaries all across our land. You are aware of it, don't you? Those are the dead bodies of young men and women across our land. 
In the coming days, the terrorist army of the zoo and their police will intensify the second phase of their ongoing genocide in Biafra land. Abductions, summary executions, kidnappings, and rape by these Fulani terrorists are on the rise and do not say I did not warn you. If you're in Anambra, you must leave as a young man or as a woman. Go to a neighboring state if you have to. Things are about to happen in Anambra state. Don't say I did not warn you. All able-bodied men must enter the bush, no more sleeping at night. Some of you are still sleeping in your homes. And I want young men in every village to form a defense force in that very village. Any vehicle in the middle of the night coming to that very village, you disable it. There are many ways to do it. And I will tell you that not live here on air to be communicated off air. That is what we must do because our land is under siege and we must defend it. And with that, we have come to the end of our presentation this very day. And I thank you all for listening. And for those of you, the Twitter staff that are listening to us this evening, I want to tell you something that maybe the whole world knows, um, but Garaba Shehu would not confess to knowing about is this. You may call Biafra a secessionist, whatever you like from now till the kingdom come. It doesn't make any difference to us. Because to us, Biafra is not just a nation, it's not a country, it's not a home. It is our religion. The same way people die for Christianity, people die for Islam, is how we are dying for Biafra. Biafra is our religion. The sooner our enemies understand this, the better for everybody. We cannot give up. Biafra is our religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship. Because Elohim is our God. I thank you all for listening this very evening. Until next time.